Hey guys, I just got in the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream Mothership palette. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I did also purchase the Intensifies Artistry Wand. Uh, I thought this looked a little gimmicky, so I thought we would put it to the test. Uh, but first, let's uh, just talk about some of the particulars here. So this is the latest Mothership palette from Pat McGrath. And it is a 10 pan uh, eyeshadow palette with a number of different finishes. We'll get into swatches in just a little bit. It comes in the very recognizable Pat McGrath uh, box. This is a close up of the artwork on there. It's very 80s. Her artwork in the past, I feel like, has been very Baroque or Renaissance inspired. This one looks very, very 80s to me. <laughs> Um, and then the Intensifies Artistry Wand uh, comes in one of those like mylar foily uh, kind of packages. So here is a close up of the 10 pan palette. And something I didn't realize when I saw, you know, promo pics of it, when I saw it on Instagram, um, is that we only have three special shades instead of four special shades. So this shade down here is not a baked shade. This one is pressed just like this one and this one, like the other uh, kind of uh, shifty, um, foily, metallic shades that Pat McGrath is also known for. But I was a little, I don't know, disappointed isn't really the word. I felt a little gypped. I felt a little gypped that we were um, short one of these special eyeshadows. Now, I will fully admit, when it comes to those special eyeshadows, no, I don't use them as much as her other shades, but it just felt a little like, oh, <laughs> why is there only three and not four? So I did want to point that out. Uh, but everything else is, you know, pretty much the same. The packaging is the same. The weight, the beveled mirror on the inside is the same. Um, another slight addition is there is now, much to my pleasure, a plastic sealed cover over this. So let's remove this together. That was really satisfying because it was so long. So here it is without the plastic cover. Same, uh, same packaging design, no change there. And this palette was made in Italy and the artistry wand made in Korea. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some swatches. So what I did was I swatched um, just the eyeshadows on top, and then right underneath I swatched the same eyeshadow, but I put the artistry wand underneath. So starting from the left, we have Skin Show Nude Ecstasy, Secret Eden, Bronze Desire, Extreme Plum Noir, Cosmic Bloom, Shockwave, Blitz Sextreme. And then we have the three special shades, Bronze Solaris 005, Astral Venusian Orchid, and Astral Amethyst Moon. So when it comes to the shadows uh, benefiting, I think, well, we'll see when we get it on my eyes, but at least for the swatches, the arm swatches, what I noticed is the ones with the artistry wand, I felt like were the kind of creamy, metallic, foily shades. I think those really benefited from being swatched over the artistry wand. I don't feel like the mattes look that much better. Again, we'll have to see. And then the special shades, the three special shades at the end, I did feel like they um, looked a little bit less like toppers. They looked a little bit more solid, like solid shadows. Again, we'll see. So what we're gonna do today, I pretty much have all my makeup on except for eyeshadow, well, eye stuff, eyeshadow, mascara, eyeliner. Um, so what I wanted to do was do like the same eye look on both eyes, but use this on one eye and not the other. Uh, so I'm just sitting here trying to think like, do I go back and forth or do I finish one eye? Let's finish one eye without this first. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to squeeze all of the shadows onto my eyes, but I am definitely going to try and get all the different finishes in there. Uh, like the mattes, there's three mattes in here, and then there's four of the more foily shades and then three of the um, special shades. So I'm going to try and get all three of those different uh, formulas in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this shade up here which is called Secret Eden. And uh, I'm just gonna do this eye first. So this is gonna be the eye without the um, amplifier wand. 
So I do have concealer down on my eyes, but I did not powder today. So yeah, this is going straight over some concealer. I'm using this mainly in the crease area as a transition shade. And just putting a light layer on my outer corner. So far I'd have to say that the matte shade is working like the other Pat McGrath matte shades I've experienced. Easy to blend, pigmented, creamy. So far so good. Just gonna add just a little bit more up there. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into one of these metallic shades. I'm trying to decide between this one and this one. I think I wanna go, I wanna use this one and then use this matte as well. So, okay, so I'm gonna go into this shade, which is called Bronze Desire. So I've got my Sonia G Worker One brush. I'm gonna go into Bronze Desire. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm gonna pat this on most of my lid here. Oh, this is a great shade, very bronze with like a little bit of sootiness in there. So now I'm blending in after I've like patted that shadow in because it's a little, it's not chunky, but it's, um, you know, it's a metallic shade. So it's a little bit more PC um, than the matte shade. After I feel like I've pressed that in just to kind of prevent fallout, um, I'm now kind of blending it and yeah, I have a little bit of fallout, but not too much. Got my Sonia G Builder brush, and now I'm gonna go into Shockwave. This was the shade I was actually most excited for because it looked like a neon melon shade, and that's just not an eyeshadow that I have a lot of in my collection, so I was really excited to try this. So I'm gonna pick some up with the Builder and add this to my outer corner. and kind of blend in. Kind of dragging it along the top of that bronze desire as well. I'm taking that first blender brush that I use, I'm going back into Secret Eden and blending all this out. It's like a hot fire look. Okay, now for the topper shade. Which one should I go for? I wish you guys could like vote real time. I think I'm gonna go for this guy down here. Of course, I was kind of debating between these two and I was like, let's pick the one I wouldn't normally go for. It's called Astral Amethyst Moon. It looks the most purpley. And I'm just gonna use my finger. I'm gonna pick some up on my ring finger here and I'm just gonna dab this. I'm gonna dab this over that bronze color. I love a good brown, like bronzy brown and purple combo. I love that in clothing, home furnishings, eyeshadow. All right, so there is one eye done and I definitely got quite a bit of fallout from that uh, last topper shade, but that's, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just gonna look very astral amethyst all over my cheek here. So now for this eye, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and swipe some of that artistry wand on. And you know, when I start layering the shadows, I don't really know what to do. I guess I can tap a little bit on. I just don't want it to break up the shadows underneath, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. So here is a close up of the packaging here. It looks like a pen, a clicky pen. And then it's got this kind of uh, triangle top. And then you click the bottom to raise the product. Now, the only problem is you can't lower it back down, but when you click it, like just the tiniest bit comes up. So I think it's okay. All right, I'm just gonna swipe some onto my lid here. And I noticed this when I swatched it, it actually has a very cool feeling. Not cool, like cool, but like cool versus hot, like it's cooling. So there it is all over. I'm just gonna take a look to see if it disturbed my concealer at all. No, magically it didn't. I feel like it's just made it look 
like a little shinier, but I don't think it's actually moved it around or anything, which is kind of surprising. I was fully expecting it to kind of start to look a little patchy. Interesting, all right. Let's uh, do the same thing. I'm gonna go into Secret Eden and add a little bit to my outer corner, focus it in my transition area. I'm just feeling my brush. I'm wondering if any of the product that Artistry Wand is coming off on my brush. Maybe a little bit. Hmm. Right there is Secret Eden. I definitely feel like it looks a little bit uh, deeper right off the bat. I don't know if I necessarily like that. I really like to kind of take my time with shadows, not going so strong. And I don't feel like my edge is looking quite as blown out. Like the pigment is really sticking to this artistry wand stuff. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. It, you know, it like, it, it's blended, but it's a little choppier than this side was like really like, whoo, like it looked really blown out. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the Worker One and grab this Bronze Desire shade, and I'm gonna press this in. I feel like the shade looks brighter. It looks more like a brighter bronze versus when I put it on this eye, I could really see that sootiness underneath, like the bronze kind of mixed well with that deep base, but this I feel like looks just very metallic bronze. And it definitely is a little bit harder to move the product to kind of blend it out. It kind of, I don't know, that artistry wand, it feels slick going on, but I feel like there's a little bit of like grip to it. And I'm going back to that blender brush going into Shockwave. Yeah, I feel like it made this side look a little patchy. I'm gonna stick by my initial thoughts when I swatched it. I don't, I don't like this artistry wand with uh, the matte shadows. I feel like it just makes them kind of sticky and not blend easily, but I do like what it did to the actual color of the metallic shade, which is it really uh, kind of brightened it up and it really made it much more like metallic bronze, like I was saying. All right, so yeah, it just looks a little patchy. That's okay. Um, what I wanna try next is layering this because I do wanna put that astral amethyst on, but if I'm putting that right on top of the shadows, you're not gonna really see the effect. So I do wanna just, just see, we're just playing. <laughs> I just wanna see how this does over eyeshadow. So I'm not gonna swipe because I feel like that's just asking for trouble. So I'm just gonna take my finger and run it over the product and then tap it on top. It's so weird, can you see that? So when I tapped it on top, it didn't move any of that bronze desire shade, but it made it look like whiter. It's so weird. Okay, <laughs> let me go ahead and add some of this astral amethyst. Oh yeah, that is decidedly brighter with the wand underneath. Wow. And I feel like I picked up less product, but there's a lot more purple going on. I do want to mention, <laughs> a lot of people will probably end up commenting like Pat McGrath said, or if you watched her live or whatever, I really just, you know, I just try and play with the makeup the way I normally would before gathering all this information about the actual products because I want to, I just want to play, you know, I just want to play and kind of discover it myself. Um, and so I, <laughs> I'm sitting here wondering, I'm like, I wonder if Pat McGrath was like, okay, only use this with the special shades. <laughs> That's the only time it's really going to work or with like the, um, the metallic shades, like it's not going to work with the mats. Well, if that's what she said, I discovered it on my own, but um, that's what I would say, that this is amazing with the special shades the most, and then with the metallic shades next, and then I wouldn't bother using it with the matte shades. I think it kind of ruined it. Like this looks beautiful, like the shock wave into that secret Eden, and this looks kind of just choppy. All right, let me go ahead and finish up my makeup. I'm just gonna add some eyeliner and mascara, and I'll be right back. All right, there is my finished look. So just some kind of quick thoughts about this palette. 
Um, I, you know, I just, I love <laughs> Pat McGrath products. I feel like whatever she comes out, especially with these Mothership eyeshadow palettes, I just find them to be very, very exciting. Um, when I look at the shades in here, I definitely feel like I've seen them before, except for maybe Shockwave and this Amethyst color. I feel like if I cover this one and this one up, we have a very kind of familiar <laughs> Mothership palette going on. But I will say like we could have gotten a little more daring with this one. Like, I don't know, I really feel like we could have pulled out this purpley blue color and like turned that into some matte shade and maybe taken out one of these or I don't know, just made it just a teensy bit more fun. And like I said before, I feel a little gypped only having <laughs> three of these special shades instead of four. Um, but other than that, I do think it is a very beautiful palette. It's a beautiful color story. I think Shockwave brings that nice punch of color. They perform beautifully. I feel like this is very consistent with other Pat McGrath uh, Mothership palettes. The foils are really, really creamy. The mattes just super silky. And the special shades are, you know, they're really chunky and they're just really, really fun to work with. So all in all, I'm, I'm happy I purchased it. I'm really glad to have it. I think it is really beautiful. Is it my favorite Mothership palette? I don't think so. I think my favorite is still number one. It is still number one, subliminal. Uh, so anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.